This device is all about getting a person out of the wheelchair, standing up and walking. We look at this uh, as a bionics really uh, to expand everybody's potential. Hi, I'm Bruno Aziza, and today I'm here at Berkeley Bionics with Ethor, who runs the concept and runs the company. So uh, you've been covered everywhere on CNN, CNBC. You've got a great presentation on TED that everybody should go take a look at. Tell us the premise of what you're trying to solve here with Berkeley Bionics. Yeah, Bi Berkeley Bionics is all about uh, creating bionic technologies. Okay. Uh, and what is bionic technologies? It's, it's really, in essence, the merger of the machine and, and the person into yeah. one, to try to solve things like getting people to get additional strength, yeah. like soldiers who need to carry 100 to 200 pounds on the back, yeah. or it is for people in wheelchairs to stand up and, and walk again. It could also though, be for the aging population, the people that are six, 700 million today around the world, above 60, multiplying to uh, 2 billion in 2040. This could help them to stand up out of their chairs if they have osteoarthritis or pain or, or other complications. So it has many, many applications, future applications, but where we are focusing in the beginning is paralyzed uh, people in wheelchairs yeah. and uh, the military. And so that's what's interesting is the take us through the wheelchair example, because in a way this is a, an alternative to the technology we have today. So you know, why is this better and what's the problem with wheelchairs? Yeah, the problem today is that it's the lack of power. Mm -hmm. Most uh, orthotic devices that you have today are actually static, like we call them, or passive. Mm -hmm. okay. So they don't really give you extra power. So you are relying on your upper body strength to pretty much do the work. They kind of give you more support. I see. So you spend a lot of energy, and usually you can just walk for a couple of minutes uh, a day. This moves from walking a couple of minutes over to basically not wanting to sit down again <laughs> uh -huh. because you're so excited about it that you, you can do this. You, you, you do this without energy, spending energy. So this is very interesting because as you're thinking about the world of data and analytics being a very narrow thing, here we're talking about how you can use technology, data, and the intelligence of such technology to help us be better humans. Now, this is the e-leg. I think it was a top innovation uh, last year. Uh, Take us through this. So how would this work? You know, what's the complexity in this technology here? Yeah, th this device is all about getting a person out of the wheelchair, standing up and walking. And obviously here you're working with somebody who does not move. Mm -hmm. So, but however, you have to be able to send signal to the device how the device should move. And the way you do that is with crutches. So when you move your crutch forward, it sends signal to the opposite leg about moving forward. So there are four motors in it, uh, in it one at, uh, two at the hips, two at the, at the knees, and uh, they kind of generate this kind of very smooth walk, which uh, is also very natural, which is a very important, especially for people who want to uh, relearn yeah. how to walk. There are people who get paralyzed and can actually relearn again. The, the neurons can be activated and, and they can actually regain that strength. So it's very important that we teach them how to do that correctly. So here we have a device that actually does that very, uh, very naturally, very, well. sure. very correctly. So this is interesting. This is again a, a great example of, of helping people to learn to become themselves, become human. And there's, so there's four motors. I'm sure there's terabytes of data going through here. Does this weigh anything, or this is, does this add an additional charge to my own body if I wore it, or how does it work? Yeah, this is the exciting part because the breakthrough really. In the, uh, in the beginning when we started working on this was how do we get 45 to 50, 60 pounds with this weight yeah. uh, to transfer completely through the frame into the ground so that the person doesn't feel anything. And that breakthrough was achieved about 10 years ago and that really got this company going. And so you're, what you're telling me is that this is, I won't feel you don't anything. Feel it. So you, not you only is it powering me, but I'm not feeling anything, and all of this is just uh, the result of technology. Now, the Hulk, the other machine you're working on, I guess you call this the exoskeleton? Yeah, uh, exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. Yeah. Exo because externally to my yeah. body. I guess exactly. you can't imagine they could be inside. Um, 
the other project is actually helping me carry even more weight. So you're even pushed further than just being neutral. You're actually helping humans carry more. As you look towards the future and how you could use technology like that, uh, it seems to me like the use of the data would be a great one. But what are some of the trends that you see where in 10 years from now, we will be talking about this as a totally natural thing, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, we, we look at this uh, as a bionics really uh, to expand everybody's po potential or, mm -hmm. or possibilities. Um, in the beginning, we are working, yes, with the ones who really need it, the paralyzed or soldiers who have this huge need of carrying more yeah. and reduce back injuries that they sustain. 40% of them actually sustain back injuries because they are carrying so much. So, so there are also price points that allows us mm -hmm. to kind of get into the market. But then, uh, as we, we go further, this goes into homes. Uh, the, the machine for the soldiers gets to be used for construction workers uh, in industrial settings. You could imagine postal workers, whoever needs to carry things, over then to the aging population, which I said like before, I mean, it's like 2 billion people in 2040 that are going to be over 60 years old with complications like osteoarthritis mm -hmm. and, and so on that just need something, just if it is just something that helps them to step out of a, out of a chair. Um, and then further, you could imagine this as even something for us that we like to take with us if we go hiking and we think that it'd be a tough hike yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have some kind of an extra power to take with you. That's further down the road and at price points which certainly aren't feasible right now. So but, this is quite so amazing. This is kind of the path. This is quite amazing where the technology is going to evolve. Obviously, you're sitting here on a large amount of data that I'm carrying around that you could imagine you could aggregate and tell us more about how human beings are evolving in natural environments and so forth. Uh, there's also another interview I want to make sure you take a look at. It's the Quantify Self with Gary Wolf because very much of these two things are tied in, in our ability to understand more how we work and how we get better over time. Hey Thor, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, no there's problem. a lot more. People should go to your website. What's the name of the website? BerkeleyBionics.com. Uh, Great, yeah. so we'll put that URL as well for you. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza. Yeah.